What's up guys, it's Mike from Yoda Expedition and today we're diving into a big debate. White lights versus yellow lights. Which one's better and which one should you buy? This isn't just a cosmetic choice. It's not like deciding between matte black or bronze wheels. This actually affects visibility and safety. So let's break it all down. Color temperature, yellow and amber lighting, lens covers, pros and cons, and most importantly, what color is right for you. Let's start with a quick science lesson. Color temperature, measured in Kelvin, tells you how warm or cool your light appears. The higher the number, the whiter or even bluer the light. If you drop lower on the color temperature scale, say under 3000 Kelvin, you get your reds, oranges, and yellows. True white light, also known as neutral white, typically falls right around 5000 Kelvin on the color temperature scale. Climb up the scale to 6,000 Kelvin and beyond, and you're in the cooler territory or where the light starts to turn blue. It looks super bright and sharp, but here's the catch. The human eye actually struggles to process those higher color temperatures. That cooler blue light can create what's called blue light fatigue. You may have even noticed this in daily life, like those glasses that block blue light for screens. Same idea. Less blue light equals less eye strain. So why does this matter? Because white light is sharp, crisp, and reaches far, but in dust, fog, or snow, that light reflects off of every little particle, and suddenly you're blind, confused, and questioning your life choices. Now let's talk about selective yellow, also known as amber lighting. Now selective yellow, which is around 3000 Kelvin on the Kelvin scale, is the sweet spot. You still get solid output, but with much less optical fatigue. You don't lose as much usable light as you might expect. It's not just about the color, it's about how your eyes react to it. Amber creates less visual stress, making it easier to focus on the terrain, especially in low visibility situations. Now here's a common misconception. A lot of folks think amber lighting prevents backscatter, but what is backscatter? Backscatter happens when your light hits particles in the air, like fog, dust, snow, or even heavy rain, and reflects right back at you. Instead of lighting up the trail, you're lighting up a wall of glowing mist. The problem isn't a bulb problem, it's a physics problem. And the higher the intensity and the cooler or bluer the color temp, the worse the backscatter. That's why selective yellow or amber light works better in those conditions. It produces less glare and cuts through the particles more effectively. But what's actually happening is even cooler your eyes are doing less work. When you reduce the amount of blue light entering your eyes, your brain can process the scene with less effort. It's not that the light isn't reflecting, it's that your eyes are better at cutting through the junk. That being said, no light can overcome pure intensity. If you've got your lights cranked to 11 in a wall of fog, it doesn't matter if they're clear, amber, or laser beams from Mars, you're still gonna get glare. But that's where dimming features or high and low beam options become crucial. Being able to dial things back for visibility, especially in nasty conditions, is a game changer. Now subjectively speaking, amber lighting is also great for terrain recognition. It creates more contrast between surfaces, making it easier to spot dips, rocks, ruts, boulders, you name it. And it's especially helpful if you're crawling in tricky terrain. This is why rally cars, Baja trucks, and weather-hardened off-roaders all swear by yellow light in low visibility conditions. It's like sunglasses for your lights. Less glare, more contrast, and way easier on the old eyeballs when you've been wheeling for hours. Now let's talk about clear white lights, the go-to choice for most lighting setups, and probably what came on your vehicle from the factory. White light is typically produced by LEDs in the 5,000 to 6,500 range. That's smack dab in the daylight to bluish white zone on the Kelvin scale. And to be fair, there's a reason these lights are popular. They're bright, sharp, and reach way out into the trail ahead. This makes them excellent for high speed runs, open desert, or any time you need to see far down the line as possible. Want to light up the next ridge over? White lights got you. Need to spot that random cow wandering into your trail at 60 miles per hour? White light is your early warning system. The human eye is naturally tuned to see best at around 5,000 Kelvin, which is about the same as natural daylight at noon. That's why many lighting manufacturers aim for that range, but we're seeing more and more companies pushing up into the 6,000 to 6,500 range. White light also starts to lose some trail cred with visibility in bad weather. 
White LEDs can be a total diva in the fog, snow, or dust. Instead of cutting through the mess, they tend to bounce right off of every little particle in the air. You end up lighting the atmosphere instead of the trail, almost like you're flying through space. This leads to a bad glare and your eyes need to work harder to process what is going on, which isn't just annoying, it actually reduces your ability to see what's right in front of you. Now this doesn't mean white lights are bad, it's actually far from it. They're incredibly effective in the right conditions, but just like any good tool, they shine the brightest when they're used in the right scenario. So white lights, great for long range visibility, open terrain, daylight matching color. Just keep in mind that in poor visibility or heavy dust, they might be doing more harm than good. That's where dimming features, selective use, or pairing with amber lights really becomes a smart move. Now let's talk about lens covers. Let's say you're not ready to go full amber and maybe you love the way your white lights look when you flex on the gram. I get it, but that's where lens covers come in. These handy little snap-on covers let you switch between white, yellow, or amber without swapping lights or wiring in any additional lights. Pop on a yellow or amber lens cover and boom, you've got a yellow beam. Take it off and you're back to daylight mode and they're cheap. So instead of choosing a color and living with it forever like it's a bad tattoo, you can adapt to your environment. Lens covers also protect your lenses from rock chips and road grime. So it's function and fashion, just how we like it. Let's not forget about lens replacements, one of the most underrated features on a good quality light bar. Some premium light bars give you the option to swap out the lenses yourself. That means if you crack one on a rock, haze it up over time, or just wanna change your beam pattern or color, you don't have to replace the entire light. Just unscrew, swap, and go. It's cheaper than replacing the whole bar and faster than sending it out for repair. Just make sure your light bar actually supports lens swaps. Not all do. And always use the manufacturer's replacement parts unless you like water inside your lights and warranty voids. And then there's the legal stuff. California, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia are all states that must have any auxiliary off-road lighting covered when driving on public roads. Some inspection stations won't pass your vehicle if those lights are exposed, or even if they're off. But that's where the blackout covers come in. Slap them on, keep Johnny Law off your tail, and pop them off when you hit the dirt. So if you're trying to stay street legal while still looking trail ready, lens covers are a solid move. Whether you're going for a color conversion, physical protection, or just trying to pass state inspection without the headache, don't sleep on the value of a good lens cover. They're cheap, they're handy, and in some cases, they might just keep you from getting pulled over on your way to the trailhead. So when should you use each light? Use white lights when visibility is good and you wanna see far and wide in the desert, open forest roads, high-speed trail runs, detailed views of rocks, branches, and trail hazards. Use yellow lights when it's foggy, rainy, snowy, dusty, or all the above, or when you're following another rig and eating their dust cloud for 12 miles straight. Don't be afraid to mix and match white spots for long distance, yellow floods or fogs for short range and low visibility. This hybrid setup gives you the best of both worlds. It's like having tacos and nachos in the same meal. So white versus yellow, which one's better? Neither one is better. They're just better for different situations. White lights are sharp, bright, and awesome in good conditions. Yellow lights are calm, reliable, and clutch in bad ones. Don't just pick your lighting based on what color looks cool in photos. Think about where, how, and when you drive and let that guide your setup. Pick the right light for the right job. And if you wanna be a real trail wizard, have both of them in your arsenal. If this video helped you avoid lighting regrets on the trail, hit that like button, that subscribe button, and drop a comment below about your lighting setup or tell me that one time you thought you could drive through a dust storm with only white LEDs. I hope you guys learned something and we'll catch you on the next one.